Yeah. 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 Can we grab you? Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yours. I want, don't worry. Yeah, I want you. Oh, thank you. Yes, I do. Oh, no. oh. You should say that on the air. <laughs> Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city, sweet home Chicago. Two is four, 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 six. Come on, baby, now get your business fixed. Come on, honey, don't you. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Thank you so much, Marty. Avi Myers here, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Sonny Hirsch, of course, is the chairman of the 24th District Advisory Committee. Um, and you can check out the 24th District and CAMPS programs at caps24.org. Check out our show on the World Wide Web at ntnm.org, where you can see all our shows on YouTube uh, from the link on uh, Sunny's site. And I urge you to do it. And I also want to thank Sunny for this wonderful two-camera setup. And one of my favorite guests, as you know, about as favorite a guy as I have on the political scene, a person who has not been on the air since he was elected. I don't think so. Maybe once to support somebody, maybe? Uh, I was on before yeah. uh, the automatic race. But the support fact is... Somebody I'm so pleased is in his fourth term for the Water Reclamation District, the president of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, and the person who's responsible for Chicago having the second best water of any major city in the country, Terry O'Brien. Avi, how are you? Good, thank you. Who's and got you the were, first best? Well, actually, I don't know that, but I do know that if, <laughs> if the people running the, the water filtration plant you were running that, it'd be first. Okay. Okay. Well, we're not running it. <laughs> yeah, we know. And speaking of water, let's talk about water first, okay? Now, I happen to just drink tap water, okay? I don't get into this bottled water nonsense. And, you know, and Andy Rooney, not too long ago on 60 Minutes, did, did this special. thing. Yeah, you saw that, yeah. what he did? Yeah. And he talked about how all these ladies are paying a buck thirty-five for Poland Springs or whatever it was. <clears throat> and when tested out, it had nothing going for it and wasn't any better than the stuff they were doing in Manhattan, which is nowhere near as good as anything in Chicago. So, you know what? As much as I like bottled water, I don't. I don't drink it. Okay, I have a bottle of Perrier. Okay, now, um, I got this bottle from the Hebrew Theological College in one of their gift basket things. This bottle is a minimum of nine years old. <laughs> so it's aged. It is aged. Okay, now, Sonny drinks bottled water. He's welcome to participate. So I've got a glass here, and Sonny, this is for you if you want. <laughs> if it's nine years old, I don't know if I want to drink it. But here's the thing. I <laughs> Have wanna, you tested it? <laughs> I've been, well, here's the point. This is still sealed. You can, yes, I see can that. Can you certify? I see that. Okay. I'm not certifying, but I can see that it's and sealed. And by the way, I don't know that any of us are going to even take a sip of this. <laughs> is that an S-Rog on the front? Uh, it could be. But Sonny asked if it was an S-Rog on the front. But the fact of the matter is... I have to make sure I give myself enough time to be able to get to the washroom after the interview in case I'm wrong about this. But we'll see. I'm going to open this up because, frankly, it's taking up pantry space. You take the first whiff. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pour... Well, you know it's what? It's got a little, uh, Lemony, little bubbly to it. Little, yeah, it's got some flavor to yeah. it. Um, you want the first one or here? <laughs> you don't have to drink it. We'll just kind sure. of whiff it. Right from Bubbly Creek. Now, this is the Perrier. It does have uh, carbonation to it, no question. Yeah. Okay. And, Sonny, I'm going to ask you to walk in here to at least be able to smell it and test it because you do drink bottled water, which I think is a complete waste of your money. I drink regular bottled water, not... Well, regular bottled water is a complete waste of your money when you can be filling those same bottles with good old aqua pura <laughs> from the Chicago Water Reclamation District and Filtration Plants. Chateau, Michigan. Chateau, Michigan is just as good, if not better, than the... <laughs> so Our water goes that way. Okay, you know what? I got guts. I'm going to be the you one... You know, Avi, i got to really tell you something. Yeah. I don't drink. Water. <laughs> 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 we could get a buzz off this. I'm you know, nine years old. I call this designer water. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm a tap water kind of guy, too. I am a totally tap and, water kind of guy. And I will tell you, I, I know people that have moved throughout the United States in yeah. different locations. 
And they always look forward to the holidays when they can come into Chicago and get a good glass of water. By the way, if I lived in another city, I might very well be a bottled water guy. And a, not here. And another thing, um, a friend of mine went to his dentist. He got transferred to California, went to the dentist out there, and the guy immediately says, you must have grown up in Chicago. And the guy goes, why? He goes, because Chicago's got fluoride in there. That's right. Water, that was a point I was going to bring up, good, by the way. Good for the... Because, and by the way, now they're the, starting to inject it into bottled water, which basically means they're probably taking our Chicago tap water and bottling it. Yeah. They could be taking your Chicago tap water and bottling it, yeah. Uh, so. And by the way, when it says bottled water, it could just be bottled water. Yeah. In other words, they could really put water from the tap into a bottle, seal it, and call it bottled water, and sell it. Well, I forgot who it was that had a study, and they... Studied all the different brands of water, right? And they, you know, they talked about the different uh, bacteria content in it, yeah. and compared to regular tap water. So, I mean, uh, still the best thing. I like draft. I don't like bottle. No, I like draft too. But you, you know. know what? I'm going to be the stupid person <laughs> brave enough as a camera on me, Sonny. <laughs> I'm going to be the idiot brave enough. I'll toast you. We've got uh, nine I'll pick, minutes. I'll to pick find you up out. when you hit the ground. <laughs> nine years old, guys. And I, and I made my bracha before, so I don't need to make one on this. But uh, Is it carbonated? Yeah, it's almost like drinking some kind of lemon seltzer. Maybe it's a, a flavor of water. You're not going to try it? I'm going to watch it evaporate. Okay, well, you know what? That's fine. I'll get, I'll get it the heck out of here. i got to try it, though. I've been thinking about doing this for years. At least I could throw out the bottle now and have room in the That's pantry. Right. You got to open it. Okay, so you know what? We just had some big rainfalls. Um, even though this is airing August 9th, you know, we filmed this right after a couple of big rainfalls. Now, my sewer blocker was up till like 12 o'clock this morning over here. Now, first of all, your house had major problems yeah. uh, four or five I, uh, years ago. You have any problems? This? You were an island, too. No, I uh, actually, when I came back, I had, uh, well, I put overhead sewers in after I had the four events that I had in my basement, one in which buckled my floor because of Ooh. the pressure of the ground, which I had to replace my basement floor. But uh, then I in invested in putting overhead sewers in. But when I got home from Ireland, my sump pump was just on a continuous run and ended up burning out. So I spent uh, the 4th of July uh, replacing my sump pump and getting that put into back into order. So Ouch. But... Uh, yeah, when I was gone, there was a storm that I guess hit uh, the north side of Chicago uh, to the tune of, I guess, about four inches in less than an hour's period of time. Well, depending on the area, yeah, you were in the area where it was a little heavier than here. You were a little bit west of us. Yeah, so. and, uh, and I guess, you know, I don't know if there's a system built to handle that type of material. I know I've seen some criticism about the deep tunnel uh, in the editorial letters to the editor and the editorial pages. Um, my understanding was that... Uh, some of the, the problems that were caused were from the rain blocker system. Um, the rain blocker the water system was a problem. Like I said, over here, over 20, almost 24 hours after the rain, there was still standing water over here. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not blaming the rain blocker system. And I system. had mud in my bathtub this morning. Yeah. And, and I'm not blaming a rain blocker system because I think it, it's effective. It's overall it's just, good. It's, yeah. it's, 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 just, it's good 19 times out of 20 It's just sure. that when you get a rainfall in that short period of time, you know, no. nothing can handle it. I mean, you got to be able to get the water to our system. Our tunnel was probably a third full no. uh, at the end of that event uh, with the majority of the water, I guess, overflowing the curbs down people's back steps and into their basements. Yeah, the fact of the matter is um, as much as people might want to devise all these brilliant engineering systems, and the system you have has been praised worldwide, uh, the fact of the matter is God, God trumps all cards. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, I mean, you know, I, I have neighbors on my block, you know, because we have the, the system in place on our block, and they're complaining, you know, when after it rains that there's water ponded on the street. And I just say, hey, it's better there than in your basement. I said, you know, because then you got a cleanup to deal with, you know, you got all kinds of changes you have to make, you know, if you got drywall down there or paneling, you know. Mm. So I said, you know, live with it being on the street. I said, that's a good thing. I said, mm. It being in your basement is not a good thing. So, no, for sure. And the yeah. fact of the matter is that, you know what, I, I think overall, considering that the intensity of some of this rainfall, what, what, for people who don't know, if you go to wunderground.com, okay, they have all these private weather stations up. And Sonny happens to be one of these guys with the weather station. Okay. So Sonny lives like six or seven blocks from me. There's another guy who's on uh, in Lincolnwood, yeah. by, right, right around Devon and Monticello, who's not far. You can actually see the rainfall as it happens and know how much rainfall there is. And I compared the rain. You can compare the rainfall now, like, like where you are, yeah. um, further west to O'Hare, 
uh, down to Midway or even White Sox Park if people are Sox fans, which I don't think I am, but some of us might be. <laughs> and, uh, but the fact is you can compare the weather. And you know what? There are huge differences sometimes. Sometimes oh, something's sure. very regional. But it makes such a big difference. In such a short time, nothing's designed for that. You had four, four inches in an hour, less than an hour's yeah. period of time. Southside had nothing. And by the way, we're talking no. about four inches. For those of you who don't know, it would be close to four, four, four inches is 40 inches of snow. snow. Exactly. So 10 inches of snow yeah. to, per uh, one inch of rain. So that's just an amazing amount. And by the way, we spent so much time on this, I do want to talk about other things. Um, so everything, so it, let me just ask you, the Lincoln. let's talk about the Lincoln Village thing real quick. All right, Lincoln Village, the, the parking lot that's now mm -hmm. been barricaded off um, right behind the theater. Uh, the scenario there was that... Um, we received uh, a complaint from the alderman with regards to uh, that particular lot not being maintained. Um, he was getting a lot of complaints from his constituents with regards to major potholes, even craters, I guess, uh, how he framed it. So what we did as the, the owner of the property is we approached the tenant who leased that land from us, and we told him that part of the responsibility with the lease with us is to maintain the property to the level of not being a nuisance to the residents in the area. And uh, they refused to uh, do anything with regards to uh, filling those potholes and, and making the surface smooth. So our law department took action as far as uh, canceling his lease. Uh, he had a lease until about 2010. Um, with that, the lot was repaired. And with district land, we have to deal with a state statute, which is state law, and how we deal with our properties. And the way of dealing with our properties is we have to competitively bid it when there's private interest in those lands. Um, what happens is when we have an interested party on it, on, uh, to use our property, they come in, they first tell us that they're interested, what they're looking and planning to do with the land, and then we run it through our engineering department, maintenance and operations department, and an R&D department, and what we call a technical review to see if it's what they're interested in is, is something that would fit there. Uh, they then have to go out and solicit uh, two appraisals. We as an agency commission a third appraisal. Well, <clears throat> when they went out and solicited their appraisals, they told their appraisers that what they wanted to use the property for was for parking lots. Okay. So um, as an agency, we can't determine on that. So we go out whenever we have our property appraised for the best possible use. And what their appraisers came yeah, up with... Because you're, you're, you're obligated by the state to do the best you can with the property. Not only that, we can't determine that these people are going to be the successful bidders. Okay. We may have somebody else that comes in and wants it to maybe put a, a shopping So no play favorites. No. So... Um, they went out and I think they had appraisals of one was like 500000 the other one was 600000 of which uh, we take 10% on an annual basis for rental. Yeah. Uh, we went out and had an appraisal done and it came back at $8 million. So quite a differential with regards to what they wanted and what we did. Uh, we ended up going to court. The judge ruled in our favor because he saw what we have to do as far as following the state statute with regards to not playing uh, playing the side of what a person wants to do with that property because it's an open competitive bid process. Yeah. So that's why we've got to have it appraised for the best use. In turn, what the annual rent turns out to be with $8 million is 800000 a year. Yeah. And it's not, it's not an unforeseen number along that North Shore Channel. Uh, our properties have just escalated with regards and appreciation uh, for use. I mean, uh, the alderman told me that the gentleman who uh, had the property originally has some property that abuts right up here against the property that uh, we've uh, closed off. And he's asking, and his property is only a third the size of ours, and he's asking $4 million for it, my understanding. Okay. So, I mean, it's not unreasonable. It's not an unreasonable figure with regards to the $8 million. We, we uh, sold land to the public schools there at... Um, Bryn Mawr and Kedzie, yeah. uh, two acres, and that's going back probably about 10 years ago, and that was about a million. Oh, for that super high right? school. for that. Yeah, the Northside yeah. uh, Academy Prep, I think is what it's called. So yeah. it's not an unusual number um, per acre with regards to the, the value of the land now. 
You know, I um, would you sell to public schools in general or no? Uh, well, we did then, and but then, you don't now, and that's no. the policy. And, and go ahead. A, a, as much as I want to let you talk further and talk to you further, I've got thirty-seven seconds. <laughs> so, first of all, hi, Kathleen. I should have said hi earlier to all of you out there who watched me drink this nine-year-old water. It was a mistake. Prom trust me, it was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> He's still sitting. I want to thank, um, <laughs> but not for long. <laughs> I want to thank Terry O'Brien, Water Reclamation, Metropolitan Water Reclamation. Do people like to call you? They call 312-751-5700. I want to thank my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch. Thanks so much for joining us. Join us again next week when we'll have a whole bunch of new shows. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Avi, for having me. Bye-bye.